We generally suit up before we leave. It will depend on the call, because some calls we won't have to wear all of it. Um, but if it's a fire, we'll get fully dressed before we get on the truck usually. Uh, when we get a call, generally the goal is to, from dispatch to in route would be 90 seconds. So that's getting to the truck, getting dressed, and getting on the road towards the call. I'm a huge supporter of women being in this, but I'm not a person who wants that so much that I want that more than I want the job to be done well. We don't want the standard to be lowered, that we as women, we just have to rise to the standard. Uh, my name is Gracie George. And I'm Carla George. I'm a full-time firefighter. I have actually just completed the fire academy, um, and I'm looking for a job to go full-time fire. My name's Chris George. I'm from here in Chatham County, North Carolina. Uh, Carla is my wife, and Gracie is our middle daughter. Our kids, we really wanted them outside a lot. Uh, we had their mud playing clothes and then their regular clothes, and so I'd be like, go out in the woods, just get muddy, get dirty. Uh, and Gracie was always very happy to be muddy and dirty. She was catching frogs and lizards, and we would laugh about how when she was little, she would catch lizards and she could uh, basically put them in like a little spell and dress them in Polly Pocket clothes. You know, I actually encouraged her to do something different. I actually had even steered her to the nurse and stuff. She tried it. She hated it. Nursing was kind of thrown out there to me, so I ended up choosing that route and went to nursing school for a semester, but quickly realized that's not what I wanted to do. So that's when I started volunteering here at Moncure, and um, after that, it was not very long until I determined that this is what I wanted to do forever. I started coming around because she was already working, you know, doing volunteering here, and I started coming around some. Other firefighters here at Moncure were really like, Mama G, you should totally, they started calling me Mama G, and they were like, you should totally give this, give this a shot. And so Moncure was sponsored both of us when we started our journey um, through fire academies. And we started in the same academy in different years, um, but then she got hired while she was in that academy and went on to work for Apex full time. Yeah, when I first first started off, uh, just being very transparent, you know, Gracie was like, yeah, this is kind of my thing, you know. Um, initially, she was like, oh, I'm not sure I want, you know, you hanging out. <laughs> and um, then it became very evident that we were both enjoying this. And when I knew that I was going to be able to choose somebody to pin me, it just felt natural for her to be the one because she really became um, one of my biggest cheerleaders and uh, supports and guiding my steps along this path. They both bring a, a air of uh, calmness in a, in, in a time of chaos. It's something about riding on the fire trucks, going to calls, helping people. My name's Katie Bond. Um, I've been with Moncure for about six months, but I've been a fireman since 2012. We have six women firefighters on our department, uh, which is higher than normal percentage-wise. They do a great job, and I'm really happy to have them, lucky to have them. My name is Robert Shy. I'm the fire chief here at Moncure Fire and I've been here 20 years. At my other station that I used to work for full time, we were very out in the public. So we had kids come in all the time that wanted a station tour, wanted to look at fire trucks. And that's where my passion is. I like working with kids. So I think that's what draws me to the fire service. I love being able to help people. Sometimes we can't, and that's a sad day, but most times we can. I enjoy the community support that we get. 99.9% .9 of the time, people are really happy to see us when we arrive. Uh, when I first got on the fire department, I had no clue why, but then I got to see the, the, the grateful people that, hey, in their darkest times, like, someone's here to help. So, I mean, it just kind of stuck with you. Christopher John Circle, Captain Monk here. Like I said, most of the time we can help people, but sometimes we, we are unable to help that can be hard, especially if it's um, a child or someone you know. So yeah, that's the stuff that keeps you up at night. That and worrying about the firefighters that work for me, I kind of never feel off duty because I feel like I always have that weight of worrying about what could happen, you know. Our gear is about 60 pounds. So you add that plus some people have a bunch of stuff in their pockets. So that's adding 
I'm gonna say about an extra 100 pounds on top of you. And it's summertime in North Carolina. It's hot as anything. There's endless training. They want us to be, you know, trained in EMS, fire, hazmat, rescue technician, water rescue, agricultural rescue. You know, it's endless and uh, ongoing. Uh, this is our training room and also where we'll hang out a little bit in the evenings. As you can see, we have one guy over there who's doing some research and things like that. This is where we do some training, uh, if we'll have classes or continuing education for our EMT and things like that. That's where we will mostly do it in this room. We live here. This is our home away from home, so it's important for us to have facilities just like we would at home so that we can cook and um, live like we would any other day at any other place. So these are what we call patch boards, and a lot of departments will just collect patches from different ones just to kind of show um, the support of the departments overall, I would say. Um, so it's really cool just to see they're all from all over the place. So There are um, certain people that you can tell right away. I, I won't say you either have it or you don't. I think you can teach someone to be a firefighter. I've known them, I guess, about five years now. We met Gracie five years ago. She was athletic, she played around with us, and then her mom, Carla George, came in about a year or two after, and she just, she just kind of blended in with the rest of us. And before I even started, Chief Shaw said, hey, the county's coming to do thing on all the females, do you want to be a part of it? And that's when I got to meet Carla and Gracie and we've just hit it off ever since. Gracie came to us and said she was interested in volunteering, and so she came and started volunteering with us, and then we sponsored her through the Fire Academy. She actually got picked up um, to work full-time in Apex, which is our neighboring department, a, a larger department. Oh, she's always happy-go-lucky. Like, she's never in a bad mood. If we're in a bad mood and she comes around, she just brightens up all, all day. Like, I've never seen her upset. I've never seen her down and like not talkative. She is always upbeat and she has a saying that I always like to quote her. She's like, always choose joy. So she's like, don't be angry, choose joy. Gracie is one of those that it's hard for her to give up. She's bullheaded and hardheaded, but she she's in there with the fight. She's in there with us. I mean, she's if you're down and dirty, she's down and dirty. Carla, her mother, started hanging around quite a bit, and she got interested and asked if she could volunteer as well. And we sponsored her through the academy, and she's just graduated. We call her Mama G. She's like, hey, come over here. I'll take you under my wing and show us how Mon Kira works, and this is how we do things, and, and I, I don't know what it is, I don't know how they can stay so upbeat, but I love it. It's both of them. Down and dirty with the both of them. They're gonna do what you do. If not, try to do it better. <laughs> it hasn't traditionally been common for women to be firefighters, but it's becoming more so, which is a good thing. It's getting that way now. Um, before it wasn't, but there's a lot of females out there now that are wanting to prove a point. They love the job and everything, but they're also proving a point to the people who said, well, you can't do that. You're not strong enough. You're not young enough. You're, you're too old, whatever. Maybe more so in the past. There are some departments that were more against hiring females, maybe because they thought they weren't as capable of doing the job because of the physical demands, or just because the, the culture was more so um, kind of like a good old boy system. But I would say a lot of departments have really worked a lot to go away from that. I feel like at our department, we're very inclusive of all types of people. And I think that's our strength. Women have just as many skills and they're probably smarter than men, <laughs> right? Departments around us are opening it up to a wide variety of people. But I've always, if we can come together and do the same thing, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're making stuff happen. Well, we're coming out here and saying, well, we can do the job, and if not, we're doing it better than you are. Like, 
We're not stopping until we get it. We're not trying to compete with the guys. We just want to be part of the team. And for us, we've been really blessed that the guys have been very receptive to us being part of the team. So it's, it's been a, a neat thing. They do. They get paid exactly the same. Um, and I, I think now they have the same opportunities. I think maybe 20 years ago it might have been harder to get promoted or maybe even to get hired. But I think that's largely a thing of the past. And um, I think they're pretty well on an even footing now. There's more than one way to do every job. And sometimes you can just work smarter rather than harder. I think there are some challenges, but I think they're overcoming all of them. This is our newest baby. Yes. <laughs> this is Engine 8. Um, so it is brand new, uh, just within the last year. It's a pretty big one. It's not as big as this one to our left. This is definitely our largest truck. It, it's more for specialized things. It's supposed to go out on fires as well, but this will have some of our rescue, rescue equipment on it as well. Um, more for specialized calls or just maybe bad wrecks and things like that. It's also really good for blocking. That's what I was going to mention. One of our biggest dangers we face as firefighters, believe it or not, is getting hit by vehicles on the road. So um, you use a big ladder truck to block out on the highway to, to offer protection for us as we're working on the other side. Our helmets, I don't know how much this one weighs, but they're pretty heavy, but they're just, you know, protect us. One of our guys, I wish I had his helmet that got um, dented up, but you know, you don't think about it, but we're out on these calls and sometimes we're getting up trees or whatever's going on and a tree came down and actually hit him on the helmet and it crushed part of his helmet down. So, you know, you kind of learn the importance of these. <laughs> but I, you know, I really don't know exactly how much everything weighs, but it's very heavy because it's got multi layers. So we have the layer in here that's like a thermal barrier that helps us handle the heat within the fire and then we have an, a spot here that's to keep the moisture off of us like from between the sweat and stuff because right. otherwise your sweat would kind of yeah. cause you to burn um, and then you have the outer shell that kind of protects you from like when we're cutting cars it's sharp and stuff so it protects your skin. We generally suit up before we leave it will depend on the call because some calls we won't have to wear all of it um, but if it's a fire we'll get fully dressed before we get on the truck usually. Uh, when we get a call, generally the goal is to, from dispatch to in route would be 90 seconds. So that's getting to the truck, getting dressed, and getting on the road towards the call. So this is where all the full-time guys keep their stuff at this station. Um, so there's six of them currently. But yeah, they usually all just, they'll stay on the rack like this when they're not here. If they're here, they'll usually set up by the truck just for quickness. So it's a really you're quick out process. The bay. Yeah. You're, 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 yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of quick dress drills that we we did uh, like at the academy, especially. Yeah. And obviously it's not always gonna be that fast because we live here. So once again, be right. people taking showers Two in the <laughs> and yes. you have to dry off and get going. So it's as quick as you can, but the goal I would say is generally around 90 seconds. All right, our workout area, we are really blessed at this department to have a ch chief is really supportive of our desire to make sure we're fit for duty. So he's gotten us some, some new uh, exercise equipment just this year. Um, but we do spend a lot of time here working out together. Right. Um, you really do there's just a lot of weights and stuff that we lift with doing this job. So um, working out, make sure that your body is ready to do the work when it's time to work. So I feel like as women naturally, we're usually stronger in our lower body. And there is a lot of work in this career where you have to be very strong in your upper body. So I know for me specifically, I know when I went through the academy, I felt that my shoulders were not as strong as they needed to be. So that was an area that I specifically worked on and continue to work on and whenever I'm talking to other females I also recommend work on your shoulders work on your arms because there's a lot of work that requires that. You can tell if you've um, been working out or not working out it's amazing how quickly we can decline if we're not working out um, on doing 
Like when you're lifting up a hose bundle and pulling it from a truck, it's a lot of weight on your shoulder plus the gear yeah. and stuff. So you're, and you're moving with a purpose, trying to make sure everything's ready to go mm -hmm. to be able to call for water so you can get to work. And definitely your cardio as well. <laughs> because you, you pull hose and you stretch it out or you throw ladders and things like that and you're, you're gonna be pretty wiped. So if you're not taking care of your cardio, you're gonna be struggling. So these buttons all kind of, all of these on the top row control the lights. So if we're going to an emergency call, we'll hit the master and that turns on all the red lights around and then all of these that are already um, flipped upright, they always stay on whenever we hit that. This part is for putting the truck into pump gear. So when we have to use the, the pump on the side of the truck uh, on the fire scene, this is what controls that. This has to do with um, the sirens that you'll hear when we're driving down the road, stuff like that. This is the radio we will use to be in contact with dispatch and to check in on scene and in route and things like that. This here is the parking brake. This deals with more lights that show up on the back of the truck um, for traffic signals and things like that. This one is used for our PA system, so if we need to make announcements to people without getting out of the truck, we'll just do that and that'll be broadcasted loudly for people to hear. Um, but there's just a lot of controls in this front area just for things like lights and uh, just additional power and things like that. When she first um, talked about doing firefighting, I was like, really? Like I said, these characteristics of her being able to go into a situation and, and calm people down and, and make people feel at ease in, in a time of chaos uh, has been neat. Well, I know you've heard from other people this, but she is very joyful. She does bring a bright light. Um, we you know, she's our Gracie girl at the house, we'll call her, and she, um, she typically is just an upbeat person. She, I, I call, she's like her daddy. My husband is ever optimistic, <laughs> I always, and uh, she is so much like him and just brings joy to every situation. I, I've been very proud of her. I mean, she's, she's physically done a lot of stuff this past, uh, really, probably year. You know, she's done well. She, she set a goal. She wanted to achieve this, and it's been exciting to get to see her do that. We were on a call together where so there was a drowning, and a young man had just lost his dad, and there was definitely discussions at the house about things, and um, she, she brings the optimistic layer to, you know, even as sad as it was, we got to be there for that young man. We're always proving ourselves. I don't care whether you're male, female, older, younger, you're, you have to prove that you're capable of being fit for duty. And there's, there's really nothing wrong with that expectation um, that we just have to understand that is part of the job and, and do the work to do that. Not everybody's called to do this. Um, there's just something about being a part of a family, a part of a team. Um, you love every aspect of it because there's so many aspects to this job from the medical side, from the, um, the fire side. The firefighting is exciting, but we're trained to do what other people don't do. Um, so I think there is a calling to, to knowing that you're called to do a job that is, your life is on the line. There's a lot of people who are capable of doing maybe the different aspects of what we do, but unless you're passionate about it and you're passionate about people, you're not gonna love it and be as good as you could be. I mean, for us, the you know, greatest command by and Jesus is to love one another. Um, and so we try to extend love to everybody we come across. I, I hope that, that every patient that we come across and every person that we get the privilege of working with feels loved when they're around us, that, um, that they, they know it's genuine, that this is just, this is not just something that we do. It is, um, we kind of as a family always just called ourselves the George crew. I'm like, we would say, you know, this is what the Georges are about. We're about loving Jesus and loving others. Um, and that if, if we don't do anything else, that people walk away feeling loved. I mean, honestly, it is a joy and a privilege to get to do this. And you never know when the pager goes off what it's gonna be. I mean, it could be a car wreck or it could just be a fire alarm and you're like, 
having to arrive as if that building's on fire, though. You can't assume it's just an alarm that's gone awry again or that the sprinklers have busted, mm -hmm. <laughs> the things that we see sometimes. But I wouldn't, I just, the word hero is not why we do this. I would say that to the community, sometimes they feel like we're heroes, but as we mentioned, you know, it's it's a calling and it is our job and it's our duty. Like when she she swore in um, as service and part of that is we're, we're swearing in that we want to protect the people and that's, that is what we're signing up for. So at that point, it's not that we're heroes, we're, we're people that have committed to doing this and are doing our job and our role is to be excellent at that so that we can provide a good service to the people. I'm really proud of our, um, our family dynamic that we have here. I feel like all the staff and volunteers here work really well together and care about each other and put their fellow firefighters first. One activity that illustrates the family feeling around here is a lot of times people will come when they're not working and hang out. Not many people go to their job on their day off and hang out. It's not just like a job either. We do have a lot of fun. Yeah. So there's also that aspect. So, yes. But we definitely fun. appreciate people, you know, being so supportive of us, which is definitely a nice thing. I think it's becoming a lot more advertised maybe and I think we still have a ways to go with that at making it seem like a good option to especially younger females like I said with my story just coming out of high school and considering career options maybe it's not as well advertised as something you know maybe you should think about doing this so I think we still have a ways to go with that but I do think it'll become more and more just because there are getting to be more and more females and so we can be advocates for, for one another in suggesting this as a potential option.